Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Create. Today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of bridges, stairs, tunnels, and just about everything I can think of that you could put on rails. Okay, maybe not everything, but a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Okay, so we're going to start with, as I said, the basics. I currently have here a cart assembler. I have shown this off in multiple episodes so far, but it is a fantastic device requiring some kind of logs, andesite alloy, redstone, and that's pretty much it, uh, besides a rail for it to be placed upon, whether it be powered or otherwise. Then you need to be able to give it some kind of redstone signal so that you can create a contraption. Now in this case, let's take this, put it on here, and if I put some kind of uh, cart on here, in this case I've got a minecart with furnace, and then pull the lever, it turns it into a creation, which will then be able to move forward and backwards and so on. If I were to click on this, the uh, the cart itself with coal, it would take off um, very rapidly. And in fact, is a really good primer for a lot of these inventions and what I will be primarily using. Now, something I did not mention previously is that in the current version of this mod, you can actually um, take these creations with you. You just need to get yourself a wrench and then you right click on the cart while it's active like this. It can't be like stationed on the, the cart assembler and not, you know, assembled yet. But if you right click on here, notice I don't have anything in my inventory. Watch this slot here. When I right click it, it shows up in my cart now or in my inventory, mine cart contraption. And then I can take this, uh, turn that off and place it back in this location when I do. Of course I'm in creative so it duplicated the item, but once it's placed here because I turned this off it automatically placed it in world. This is an actual block now and cannot be you know pushed or anything like that. So there you go. It's it, That's the end of the video. No I'm kidding. There's plenty more to go. That's just something that may change in the future, but for now uh, version 116.5 I am playing on that is a really cool item, especially if it's uh, it only works with uh, one cart. If you have multiple carts hooked up or something like that, it won't work with that. But as a single cart thing, uh, you can make all sorts of crazy things and then make it portable and take it with you. It's it's really, really nice. <laughs> really nice. Trust me. Now, uh, things that we can do so that uh, we can get this thing going. We're going to start off with slow stuff, and that is uh, an automatically placing rail system. So a train that will place its own rails, right? Nothing really too fancy about that, but uh, it will probably be usable at least for a lot of the other things because I'm going to kind of add on stage at a time. Now in this case, I'm going to want to make sure that I am stickying, in that case, using this, this the super glue that's in my offhand, uh, blocks together in order to do it. Now there are other things you can use, there are chassis and whatnot, uh, as people probably have mentioned in the comments at this point, but I'm just using glue for the sake of uh, simplicity in this case. So deployers are going to be your bread and butter for a lot of stuff on these things because they can place things. Uh, it will require a little bit of progress with brass and electron tubes and stuff, but not too much. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go a couple blocks out. Uh, I'm actually going to break one of those ones. I'll show you why in a moment. Then I'm going to put this hand on here and I'm going to put an actual chest in this location. There we go. Everything is stuck together. And if you want to make sure of that, you can go out and if the if the creation is too big that when you look down at a lever or something like that, uh, like if you're up here and you're, you're trying to see it, I found that hitting F5, uh, provided that you're looking at the, uh, the lever that you're going to flick, helps you to see if everything moves up a pixel or two so you can tell if it's all attached. So that that's just a little tip there. But this in itself isn't really going to be too helpful. What you're going to want to do is filter this by putting in a rail. Therefore, this, as it progresses along, anytime that there is a spot where it can put a rail in the, the space two blocks below it, in other words, if you look here, there is, uh, let's take this super glue off here, there is, give me that back, <laughs> there is one block and then the second block here. So there's actually two spaces. It will place in the second location there. And let's break that, put this back down. Just to give an example, I usually like to have about three rails in front of a cart just so that it has a direction that it can go in because sometimes these things can get a little bit squirrely and go all over the place, especially if it's a single cart contraption. Um, but yeah, the, this is pretty much it. You just need to uh, add into it rails. And in this case, I'm just going to put a stack in there 
There we go. And now it just needs to go. So if I turn this on, it will automatically, as it progresses, start laying track on any uh, flat surface that it can. But it needs some kind of locomotion. Now in this case, I'm going to use coal. If I add coal into the chest as well, it will self-feed the coal from that location. So if you have a, a device that's also automatically mining coal while it goes, it can automatically refill its fuel source, which is pretty darn cool. In this case, we're going to launch it. We're going to go. And there it goes. And you can see it made a little track, but then, of course, it got stopped by a wall. Now, as before, we're going to make sure I don't have any other creations in my inventory. I don't. So I'm going to right-click that. I'm going to turn this off. And then I'm going to put this down in place. There we go. And it's back. And it is currently, there we go, locked in place. Ready to go for round two. Now, next step is what happens if there is a gap. And this is how you can actually make bridge builders. So if you have long distances that you need to make or you're trying to cross an ocean or something like that and you want some kind of bridge going across, you can have this thing automatically place bridges and it doesn't even have to be placing against a block. So like, uh, for example, let's put down these three blocks. It could feasibly place this block here without being a, without having to place it against something. It just places a block to down from where the hand is aiming. So you just need to add a little bit onto that. Now in this case, I'm going to add oops, a little bit of some of the glue. Then we're going to put down something for this hand, this deployer to attach to. And I forgot I needed a little bit more glue and another deployer. There we go. Now in this case, I'm going to tell it I want uh, cobblestone. So let's grab a bit of cobblestone and we're going to put that in the filter and then it will place cobblestone two blocks down. So not this space, but where this andesite casing is, it will place a cobblestone block. But if there is a block there already, it will not place. So once it moves forward, it will start placing line, a line of cobblestone if it has enough in its inventory. So let's actually grab this. There we go. I've got a stack in there now, plus a whole bunch of rails. And then following that, and the next block after, you could put it in the same block above it, but it, it needs to have the block existing first. And as they work simultaneously, you really want to have one following the other. So placing down the block, then placing down a rail on top of it. Same as before, pull the lever just to make sure everything works. Seems to be okay. And then we feed it fuel. And you saw there for a split moment, a split second, it actually kind of took a little bit of a left turn and then continued forward. It's because I wasn't directly behind it. And it, like I said, it can get a little bit squirrely sometimes. But still, this made its own little bridge. You can have multiples on the sides and so on. And you can actually have this expand out uh, much wider if you want. But it will use up the stuff in its inventory over time. So let's turn that off. Then we'll take this and put it back in the spot here and it is locked back down now you notice though it is still being stopped by the wall well let's get rid of these and, and continue on with a bunch of experimentation on how we can make this even better now if you want this to to make paths or bridges or whatever but you don't want it to stop you can add in the secret ingredient of a mechanical drill now these will of course need to be stickied on the front at, oops at least um in the area it helps if I don't fall down there. Let's try in flight mode. There we go. <laughs> if I stick these down and then I need to actually stick here and then put one down underneath. There we go. So now we have this thing clearing the entire path of this cart because it's only three blocks tall. That's all it needs to do. Now, yes, you can widen this uh, considerably. You can make it extra wide and, and extra tall and stuff. Just I'll show you some of the drawbacks of how that can uh, work out, especially if you've got it being a tunneler instead of a bridge maker. Now, as a bridge maker, this works just fine because it's not really going to run into too much. Um, but uh, it depends on the, the distances you're looking to go. So again, we've got a bunch of cobblestone, a bunch of rails. Should be just fine. And just to make sure, pull the lever and everything is attached. All right. Now, if I click on here... It continues off and then it starts mining its way through until it runs into something it can't get past. And that in this case is bedrock. And you see though, it did place beyond that because it still kept on trying to continue. Now there are some things that will stop the progress of something like this. Let me just grab this. We'll bring it back to the beginning again, turn it off, 
put that back on the track place it down there we go and it uh, actually broke when I placed it because I had turned off the cart assembler it broke the rail that was here which is fine honestly because I'm not too bothered by that we can we can fix this up real quick let's let's put a bunch of these down but the things that you're gonna run into problems with are going to be entities and liquids and I can show you a little bit on how to mitigate some of that uh, you already have one of the solutions and that is this the mechanical drills can take care of some of the entities because it actually does damage if you have an entity in front of it then that's not a problem and it will probably end up killing those entities before it ends up uh, bumping into the cart and sending the thing askew but if it's a bat or something and it's flying around and it and it just like gets stuck in here it could turn around your device so you're going to want to be very aware of anything like that if you have a bunch of uh, animals nearby when you're working with your creations keep them away from the carts because those things can be pushed and turned accordingly <laughs> now liquids are a little bit more tricky uh, but before we get too carried away with this I feel that uh, we should take a step back and actually just show you how we can make a stair creating device or uh, a rail that goes up at a 45 degree so you don't have to keep on going place block place block place block and then a rail place block place block rail place block place block rail no you can have it do it all for you in this case Let's uh, put these in the back burner for now, and we're going to have got a minecart with furnace here. I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it to actually take off on me. And then we're going to build this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put super glue in my offhand so everything is automatically made sticky, just to give an example of what the heck is going on here. So you can see here we're going to need another chest. I just like putting them on the back corner for my own sake. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Uh, but as before, we're going to need deployers. Now you're going to notice a little something, oops, uh, is different on this one than there is on this one. You notice the deployers are at a downward angle. That's so you can place under the rail and on top of the rail. In this case, by raising the block that is that the rail is placed on, uh, essentially the cobblestone here it will therefore create a slant that goes up so it'll do it'll uh, create a block here then it'll do a rail on top of it and then continuing and so forth now the problem here is that it, you actually need double the cobblestone or whatever your building ingredient is as you do rails uh, so if I put in uh, two stacks of cobblestone I would need one stack of rails in this case let me get a whole bunch more so we can get to the world height all right and as you can see we've got two stacks of cobble for each stack of rails in here we've got more than enough to reach the world height especially since we're not starting at block zero we're you know somewhere around Y level 71 which I've I just turned on my little mini map in the top left corner so you can see the Y levels and that's pretty much all there is to it. You just need to make sure everything's stuck to itself. You've got the materials for it, and it can go all the way up by itself. Uh, but you do need to make sure that you filter these. So let me grab some rails here on the back end and our building material on the front end. Then one piece of coal is actually all you need to do. It'll, it'll get there. So I'm going to try following this. <laughs> uh, let's make sure everything's connected. Yes, it is. Uh, as best I can, but it will probably outpace me. So uh, I'll, I'll keep the little mini-map up on the left side there so you can see the Y level as we progress, but it, I will also try and try my best to keep it within view, but it, it might escape me. So let's try this, see how we do. There it goes. And there we go. I did a little bit of a time lapse just so you could see us get all the way up to the top here. We're, we're at 255, the, the current building height in this um, mod version or in this uh, Minecraft version. And yeah, don't break this though while you're up here because any contraptions that are above the build height, it will attempt to place them and then void them. It, it, they will get destroyed. So make sure that if you have anything of value up here that you're going to as before let, let's get rid of some of these old ones that we don't need anymore and this one as well i'm going to right click there we go now in my inventory and as before we can follow this all the way down and as you can see as i'm uh, kind of going on a downward slant and just kind of showing you a little bit this is quite the hike <laughs> 
Not that it's uh, a powered rail by any means, but at the very least, it's one way of creating a stairway that goes up. Okay, so enough shenanigans. Let's actually put this thing to use. I've shown you in previous videos how you can make vertical mine shafts. Well, using one of those things, including a, uh, a method for... There we go. For uh, using it as an elevator to get down, you can then use something like this, uh, perhaps a more modified version, to mine along the path that is down there. So let's go all the way down and uh, set up down there. Okay, so we're down below, and we're going to build a new one from scratch. But this one, and it's going to be very similar to what we've already done, but it's also going to be a little bit different. In fact, I'm going to start off with the back end of it so you can see what the heck is going on. Uh, I'm also going to grab a seat, and we're going to put this here stuck to the back of it. Uh, I'm going to get underneath here, put down one of these, and I'm going to hold sneak while I'm doing this. So, Because otherwise, if I click on this seat, I end up mounting the seat. Uh, and this is just so that you can ride along with your contraption and hopefully keep it chunk loaded. Just be aware that um, if it runs into trouble like a, a massive pit of lava or something like that, you could end up being, you know, uh, pulled along with it. You could always just hit sneak though to dismount, so don't fall asleep while at the wheel. <laughs> now, in this case, uh, what I'm trying to show you here is one of these, a plow. A mechanical plow added on to the back end here will start picking up the rails as it progresses. Therefore, you don't need to have stacks and stacks and stacks of rails. Oh, there's one of those pesky bats already. Um, uh, that uh, will d ensure that your creation continues on. Instead, you only need like about a dozen. Uh, and that's probably more than enough in this case. Now, let me get rid of this bat. All right, that is now taken care of. So. You can see I'm at Y level 11. This is my recommended height for current 116 modded Minecraft uh, for you to do any kind of tunneling at. Reason being is that a lot of lava um, pools and stuff like that are at about 10, maybe 11. And either way, you still will be able to place blocks and they will be able to traverse them in most cases. Now, if you have a whole bunch of water or lava pouring down on the side and it's oozing in up to the uh, location of where the, the, the rails are, you might run into some problems. You can simplify that by trying to, you know, make your the, the whole front end of it very large. <laughs> but there's no need for you to actually do exactly that. I made this way too tall. There we go. So let's continue on with this, the same stuff we did before. We're going to go with a deployer up at head height. And then, as before, we're going to have another block of some sort here and another deployer underneath that so that we've got... The one that makes the, uh, the the cobblestone as it is. I just stickied that to the ground, but you get the idea. Once I pulled the lever on this thing, if I had a chest in place, which I, I don't in this case. Let me actually get a chest. There we go. Put a chest here, and I put a cobblestone in there. Actually, let me get a bunch of that as well. There we go. I now have a stack of cobblestone in there. I filter this to say cobblestone only. Then when I pull this lever... If I have a minecart, <laughs> I keep forgetting everything in place. There we go. You'll see that it automatically placed that cobblestone. So you know that it's currently working. Now the problem is that I did not filter this one, and therefore it's trying to steal the cobblestone. Put that back in there. Rude. I want you to only lay rails. This is uh, something that you need to verify is that everything is doing what you want it to do. So now it's currently an automatic track layer. And it will automatically pick up the tracks. So I only need a few tracks in this location. Let me uh, put three tracks in there. Which, added on to this, it's only going to go about here. So it, it would stop before it got to that wall. So let's actually try this out. Just a real brief synapse here. There we go. I made it go a little bit further than before just so that it would ensure that uh, it ran out of track. So like I said, we only have three track in there. So it would only go about this far. But with the plow, it should pick things up and constantly keep going until it hits that wall. So, let's see. Everything seems to be connected. Now, let's try and get things running. And remember, I like to have at least three rails myself, uh, just so that it has a straight direction to go, since I can't always get behind this thing. There we go. And you can see it is currently picking up and placing the rails. Pretty darn cool. And same as before, just be sure to 
have your wrench with you so you can pick things up. Now you notice it did not pick up the rail that was underneath the cart assembler. It's the only one that it won't touch, which honestly, I'm fine with that because that, that means it, it's going to behave properly and not actually take anything that I want it to. All right, placing this back down, we currently have a partial creation. We need to make it bigger and better. So with it currently in its uh, existing form, it is very susceptible to liquids or, or fluids. And by extending this out a bit, I know that this looks a bit crazy, but basically you're making a giant battering ram. This is the main section and then everything else is just going to be fluff. We can add in a few extra deployers. Now this is entirely optional. You don't have to do this. I like to do this because I think that it's actually pretty cool. But sneak and placing will place it going up. Uh, is as opposed to uh, before where it would aim directly at you. So I'm going to go down here, break a couple of these so I can place these up on either of the sides of this. So I currently have the three of these. And what will happen, to give an example, is that these will place in this location, uh, this location, and this location. So it will create kind of like a little bit of a cover over top of your rail system. And it's just something that I kind of like doing. You don't have to do it, but it does give it a measure of protection from a little bit of some of the waters that come down. If you want to lower it down even further, you definitely can do that. And in fact, it's probably a good idea. Maybe, maybe I should do that right now. Now here's something that you might not already know, and that is if I place this block here, you think, all right, well, isn't this going to get blocked by this block? No, it, remember, it can reach through this space. It places blocks on top of that. It will place a cobblestone here, here, and here is where these are going to place. So you don't need to worry about anything that's in between them. So you can actually use this as a location to sticky things together if you so desire. Or use chassis or whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. Now, out front, you probably want to make sure that everything is as sticky as can be. And then you just put a whole bunch of drills in place. And as before, uh, I'm going to make sure that I have enough space here. Uh, I want to actually put drills on the entire bottom row so that it can clear out anything underneath just in case there are things like, I don't know, maybe maybe a, a bit of glass or some weird uh, world gen that does not accept rails on top of it. I want to be able to break that and place a new piece of uh, cobblestone so that it can actually do that. Then I'm going to put all these in place and we're just going to sticky them all together. And uh, just for good measure, I'm going to sticky everything to itself. There we go. Now that should be good enough. Um, just in case, I'm going to put another row on top. And as before, you can make this thing extra wide and so on. It, it can get really ridiculous with how how crazy this thing can get. In fact, let, let's, let's do exactly that. We're going to make this thing extra wide just for for greater effect all right so that that's that's a lot of stuff that that's that's a lot of stuff and in fact i could go even further but i think i'm going to just leave it at that it's going to create its own little uh roof which at the very least while you're on here it should keep mobs from uh falling down in ravines or things like that on you while you're sitting on the back end but the reason that I've got this distance between the front and the back is that if it runs into some falling water, not, not standing water, but falling water, it often the water will wash in and wash out any of the, uh, the rails that are in place. This extended neck as it is more or less will help it to prevent that from happening. It doesn't guarantee it, but it definitely helps. And creating a little bit of like a, 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 a angled roof above you and just this one underneath here it does help in most cases now if you run into a body of water or a, a giant lava lake like in the side of it you're in trouble um the, there's not much you can do there the device will probably stop your cart might break and then all the items could all of the blocks could be placed um but then that usually just means that they're still salvageable you know a, a placed chest is a placed chest so you know it, it doesn't burn or anything like that could be broken by something else though but anyway let's get this thing rolling i think uh we need to test see if everything seemed to pick up that's actually pretty encouraging i think it looks good to me so i'm gonna leave that on and uh, i'm actually going to oh i take that back turn it off i'm going to put a little bit of coal in here 
just two pieces because I am confident that it's going to be mining some coal throughout its travels and therefore refueling itself. But we're going to need to do better than just a chest stuck on one of the sides. We're going to need a bunch of them. And you don't want to have chests wherever these things are going to be placed. So I recommend keeping them in locations that you can actually access them, putting them here. If you put it up at the top, up at this spot, it, it, keep in mind the tunnel is going to be so like only this tall, so therefore you won't be able to open the chest. So I recommend only putting it in locations where you can access the chests. Therefore, you, you have access to them. You can even put them in here. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I mean, these will actually break uh, in between. They'll turn into individual chests once the thing is going. And um, that's nothing really blocking in the way. You could even put chests underneath here if you really wanted to. But I feel that this is pretty good. If you wanted to, you can also have more seats on the back end for other people that want to join in. If you have multiple multiples coming through, I'm going to have to kill another bat. But uh, let me get rid of this bat, and then we'll start this thing up. Okay. So, with everything in place, we're going to get this thing launched. Uh, it'll automatically place itself. It has enough, um, enough cobblestone to get itself started because it's going to be mining almost entirely stone, turning things into cobblestone. I don't need to worry about that too much. It has a, a little bit of coal, not much. It looks like it, it's already tried eating some. I'm going to grab another piece just, just because. And it's got four rails. I'm going to double that to eight just just in case. Uh, I do need a few extra ones to go with. Now, the only problem is, is that once this thing has gone a very long distance, you don't have any rails to get back. But you do have a simple straight path that it will be making. And remember, you can always make like an entire tunnel out of this thing. And I don't mean like carving it. I mean building it. You can have these things being like cobble being placed around the entire thing. But it's only going to be able to do that as long as it has the materials to do so. This is why I chose to do three placements of cobble there, and one here. So it needs to mine at least four cobblestone per block that it goes in order for it to be able to keep up with that kind of production. So, for further ado, let's click this and make it go. Whoops. I swear that happens to me almost every time. All right, let's click it again. There we go. And this time, I'm sitting on top. There we go, and it is making the thing. And you, you'll notice that there is a little bit of some some glitchiness with this. It's because the whole thing started off a little bit iffy, so you got to be a, a, a bit cautious. You might want to wait to uh, click on this thing before you know you get too far along. In fact, I might just let this thing uh, go. But I think I, what I'm going to do is actually put down. One of these. You can put down a card assembler while it's en route and it will automatically stop just like that. Then you can pick one of these back up and put it back down as you'd like and you can, as before, just add yourself a lever or something like that just to get it going again. Now in this case, I'm going to add another seat but a little bit lower because I didn't like how <laughs> how tall I was up there with my head like almost into the ceiling. But before we do that, we can see if there's anything in oh, in these chests. Wow, look at that. That's how much we've already got. Wait, what? That's how much we've got already gotten? That is ridiculous. Um, okay. I don't think that there's anything else in the other chests here. But that is a serious amount of stuff. That That's only gone. Okay, I did expand this much further, bigger than I have in previous ones. But yeah, okay. So let's pull the lever. Everything's up and running. And then fuel it. And then I get to click on this. Uh-oh. Okay. Phew. For a minute there, I was worried. I saw this thing show up after I clicked with the glue. Anyway, uh, I'm going to let this thing run for a while, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll do a little time lapse. Yeah, it's a good thing that my head's a little bit lower, just because of that little glitchiness there. So I'll see you guys in a bit.
And there we have it. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's pretty dark. Let me uh, get a light on the situation here and put this down. But a bat came through and flew right into where this thing likes to place stuff, created a gap. So that's probably, uh, besides fluids, it's going to be bats in, in cavernous areas like this, as well as uh, fluids that might stop you. But I, I forgot to put uh, the filter on here so this thing would create the large arch along the entire path back. <laughs> so that that's kind of an oops. But that's okay. Because this thing is still on the cart, I can easily, uh, you know, just take it with me. I put it in my pocket. Let me get rid of some of these old ones, and I'll be right back. Poof. Into my pocket. Okay, and now that I've taken that one, I can put down my other one. My get home device. Because I still don't want to craft up hundreds of rails to get back home. Uh, I'm quite a distance away, but not to worry. I currently have in this chest up here just a few rails and I've got a seat up front and a way of getting myself home let's hope that I can actually catch up to this thing fast enough turn this thing on hit the button there we go and now I am up front and <laughs> being laid a path to get home and there you go I put a marker at the end of this tunnel before we ended up getting back to where we started and it was a little bit over 500 blocks before we ended up running into any kind of trouble. So, I hope you found it useful. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to come visit us on Twitch, click that notification bell, and help us spread the mischief. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.